Now we'll be looking at the valuation of debt security model. And the valuation of we have three three um three techniques here. Number one is valuation of irredeemable fixed rate debt, valuation of redeemable fixed rate debt, and um and valuation of convertible debt. Now the first one, valuation of irredeemable fixed debt. Before I even um go into this, I would like to explain further what valuation of debt security is all about. Valuation of this equity model deals with the valuation of the um interest future interest payments. So now a, a company issues out a bond to the market to the public. Now people buys people buy into the bond. People provide the company finance. Now the company have to pay this interest on the bond and also the principal. From the formula you have here, that's what that's that's what I is the annual interest payable. Now for irredeemable fixed rate debt, irredeemable fixed rate debt deals with the present value of interest in perpetuity. Irredeemable, the interest cannot be redeemed. The interest will not be redeemed. So now it is now the company is now saddled with the responsibility. So you not to pay this interest on on a yearly basis till it folds up or till it decides to what <clears throat> to redeem the 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 debt right now um for the formula is i say this valuation of debt security is more like um valuation of discount um discount valuation model for um Market value of irredeemable fixed rate of debt. We have interest divided by um cost of debt. Now interest, the interest is the annual interest payable continuously. That's into the future. The future interest payment payable divided by the cost of equity, cost of debt capital. Sorry. Now dividing by the cost of debt capital, what we are trying to do, we are trying to get the present value of this interest. Into the future, we want to know the present value today. That we are dividing it with the cost of debt capital. So market value is equal to what? Interest divided by cost of debt capital. And this cost of debt capital, the answer we are going to get is the present value, the market present value of the of the debt today. Now this is based on the lender's perspective. When we are when market value of debt using borrowing cost, borrower's cost, sorry. Is after tax because basically the um tax is an allowable expense, so it's going to be what after tax. The interest will be after tax. The cost of debt will also be what after tax. Now let's look at this example: market value of irredeemable fixed rate of debt. As I said, the interest is irredeemable. The com company will not to pay that interest. Will not to pay that interest into the future. So now, um, a ten percent irredeemable bond denominated in naira pays interest every six months. The interest yield required by investors in the bonds is eight percent per annum. Before I go forward, I would like you to understand that the future value of all bonds is either one thousand or hundred naira, all over the world. Right now, so the interest yield required by investors in the bond is eight percent. What is the market value of this bond? What you have to understand in this is that this bond is six months, right? The interest is six months. So anything you are going to do, you are going to divide by two. So 8% divided by two gives us 4%. Now, 1,000 divided by two give us what? So 10% of 1,000, it gives us 100. Divided by two, it gives us 50. That's how, that's how we got 50 divided by Point zero four, and how I got the one thousand. I told you that all bonds, all future value of bonds, all market value of bonds is assumed to be hundred and one thousand all over the world. So now, um, this is how we this one thousand two hundred fifty is the market value of it is made them to be fifteen naira. You are going to receive in many years to come. The market value today is one thousand two fifty. Now, valuation of redeemable fixed rate of debt. 
But I'm not going to read I'm not talk about violation of the feast rate of death. What we're trying to say. We're trying to say that. That um, these bonds are going to be redeemed. Right? Example. A company issues out a bond to the public. And tell them, okay, fine. This bond is for five years. At the fifth year, I must have paid you all your interest and I'll pay your principal. So what we're doing here is this. We want to value the interest and the principal. So if this four year bond is gonna be from year one to year four, if the interest is let's let, let's look at an example. But before I go to this example, let me read what is here. This is the present value of all future interest in maturity plus the present value of principal payment at maturity, discounted at the yield of the bond. When you hear about anything yield, anything yield is known as returns. Yield is known as returns. Now, example as example of redeemable fish rate of debt. A, a dollar denominated six six percent bond pays interest annually. Now that's the interest it pays six percent. Six percent is going to be applied on what one thousand. Don't forget. So now the interest is going to be what sixteen euro, right? And has three years remaining to maturity. They have three years remaining to maturity. That means at the third year they are going to redeem the what. The principal, which is what one thousand. As I told you, the principal is one thousand. The principal is also known as the nominal value. The principal is also known as the future value. Now it will be redeemed as part. The interest seed required by the bond investor is five percent. That is what that's the returns. And this five percent is what they are going to use to discount it. An annual interest payment has just been paid. The value of the bond is calculated as follows for each one thousand nominal bonds. I could see um interest is 16 era as I said 6% of 1000 16 era year 3 year 2 16 era year 3 is both the in, in, in interest and the principal repayment that's 1016 era now you discount it using the what the interest here required by the investor which is 5% you discount it 5% which you give us and how can you do this discounting 5% is 1 divided by one divided by one plus r. So what we'll have here one divided by one plus r and our r is five percent, which is one plus one divided by one plus zero five, which goes zero point nine nine five two. Divide it again with one point zero five to go zero point nine zero seven. So that allows how you continue today to get the final level. So with this, the bond value today, the present value today is what? Is one thousand twenty-seven naira. Now I would like you to understand something. This that was in in, in, in bond that was called at par premium and discount. Par is the market value, is, is the future value, is the principal, is the nominal value, which is what one thousand. Anything above one thousand, yeah, that means the bond has been issued at a premium. Anything below 1,000, that means the bond has been issued at a discount. So I want you to understand that. That means this bond now is what? Is at a what? Premium. Right? So anything below 1,000 is what? Discount. Anything above 1,000 is what? Is premium. Uh, the bond will have a market value of 1,027.3. So and at, price, at, at this price, investors in the bond will receive an average annual return of 5% if they hold the bond until maturity violation of convertible bonds now this is basically more of it's, it's called violation of convertible bonds that means the bonds will no longer be redeemed instead the bond will be converted to ordinary shares that's what this is talking about so the market value of a convertible bond is the higher of number one the market value of the bond as a straight bond that will be redeemed at maturity number two is the mark or and you have to compare the two of them, not the one that is higher. And the present value of the future interest payment up to the time that the bonds can be converted into shares. That means if the bond is going to be converted in year three, that means the present value of the future interest payment that's 60, 60, 60 to year three, right? Plus the present value of the expected market value of the shares. Now the shares have been the bond have been converted into shares. Now you're not check, you're not confirmed what the market value of the shares. First and foremost is the present value of the what? Future interest payment. If the interest payment is sixty every year, right? You and you have three years for you to redeem for you to convert that bond to shares. 
So you do what? 60, 60, 60. Find the present value of the interest. Then at the third year, you now look at the present value of the expected market value of the shares into which the bonds can be converted. A typical example is this. A company has issued some 4% dollar denominated convertible bonds. That's the interest, 4%. When you have the interest, normally you all you do, you apply the interest on the what nominal value of the bond, which is 1,000. Now, that, which is what, 40. Now, these are convertible into shares of the company in four years' time. That means the interest, they're going to receive this interest for four years. At the end of the fourth year, they will do what? They will convert it to what? They convert the bond to what? To shares. At the, and uh, so they, they are convertible into shares of the company in four years' time at the rate of what? 25 shares for every 1,000 bonds. And they are going to convert it to what? 25 shares for every what? 1,000 bonds. Interest on the bonds is payable annually, and the current year interest has just been paid. Don't forget, in dividend and um, and interest is always what you own that we normally use. So the interest has been paid. Perfect. Now the the current market price of the company of the company shares is forty six naira. The current market price, the current that means we are in year one now, right? The current market price in year one is forty six. I mean, in year four, what is going to be, if you are going to convert it in year four, what would be the current market price? That means if the if it is not growing, if, if the market price is not growing, does not have any growth rate, that means it will still be 46. But they said, and shareholders expect an annual dividend to grow by 5% per, per year into the foreseeable future. That means this 46 is going to grow by what? 5% in four years' time. What's going to be the value? The dividend is paid annually, and a dividend for the current year has just been paid. The convertible bonds require an annual return of 6% per year on their investment. What is the current price of the convertible bond likely to be? For a straight bond, which you just did, a straight bond would be what? It would be 40, 40, 40, 40, and the 40 is being redeemed. Normal one, right? So it would be 40, 40, 40 to 4. The 40 is going to be redeemed at what 1040. So you do 1 to 3, 40, then 40, 1040, right? The value if converted, the interest from year 1 to year 4 is 40. Why for year 4 when it's going to be converted? Now you are going to multiply, what I want to do is to multiply the number of shares, which is 25, with the value of the shares. The value of the shares as at Year one is 46. Now, what's the value of the share at year four? What are you gonna do? You you compound it, you look for the future int the future value of 46 in four years time. What are you gonna do? Four 46 times 1.05 raised to power four. 1.05 raised to power four will give you 55.9. I said 46 times 1.05 raised to power 4. We do 1.05 raised to power 4 as 4 years compounded, then um, times 46 to give 55.9. 55.9 times 25, it goes 1397 0.5. So now, um, yeah, we did, yeah, we did this cumulative discount factor, which is 1 minus 1 plus r raised to power minus n divided by r. I will come again. 1 minus 1 plus r raised to power minus n divided by r. Why this is just 1 all over 1 plus r raised to power 4. You get this. And the r is what? You tell the r is the r is 6% per year. So when you do this, you get the, the value of the bond today. Value-based management model. Now, this value-based management model is based on the concept that the ultimate measure of a company, of a company's success, is to the extent to which it increases the wealth of shareholders. Value is created when companies invest capital at returns that exceed the cost of capital. So, all the techniques used here is, 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 is used in order to determine the value that will be added to shareholders' wealth. The first one is the cash flow return on investment. Cash flow return on investment is synonymous to 
return on capital employed. But now, we are not looking at profit. We are looking at adding value to shareholder. Because when you add value to shareholder, that means you have added, this is not accounting profit now, but you have added real money to them. You have added cash to them. So cash flow return on investment is a real rate of return measure that identifies the relationship between the cash generated by a business relative to the cash invested in it. Right, the cash, the brought that's the capital employed relative to what the cash then generated. So that's why the formula is cash flow divided by market value of capital employed. So basically, this is more of what adding value to share. So if you check this, you now know whether you compare it to the previous year, you know whether value has been added to the company or not. Total shareholders return. This is a measure of the performance of different companies, different company stocks and shares over time. It combines share appreciation and dividend pay to, sh to show the total return to shareholder expressed as an annualized percentage. Now, I would like you to understand that, that return to shareholder is not just dividend. There could be capital gains as share appreciation, share price appreciation. What does share price appreciation mean? It means that yesterday's value of my share as an investor in Dangote is 50 Naira. Today's value is 70 Naira. That means I've gained 20 Naira increment. That's share price appreciation. My shares have appreciated by 20 Naira. So how can you know your shares have appreciated by 20 Naira? You do what? You do today's value minus yesterday's value divided by today's value. Divided by yesterday's value. Right? So that's why you have share price at end. That is today's value. Minus share price at beginning of yesterday's value. Plus cash paid to shareholders. Divided by share price at the beginning. Right? This will give us the what? The total shareholders return. So basically it's made up of cash paid to shareholders, which is in form of dividend and the capital gains. Economic value added. Economic value added was developed as a measure of performance that is closely correlated to shareholders' wealth. Economic value added deals with the economic value that has been added to the company. It doesn't deal with accounting value. It deals with the economic value. That means value has been added. So if value has not been added, that means value has been lost. Now the following concept underpins economic value added. Number one, it is assumed that Managers should be charged for capital they use. Around, a manager should be charged. Managers, when using any capital provided to them by their by the shareholders or the debt holders, they should be what charged for it. Now, a company and each operating division within the company should make enough profits after tax to provide returns that are expected by the providers of capital. That means the company should generate. Managers should ensure that the company generates enough cash to provide the returns that is expected by providers of capital. Now, the cash, the profits they are going to generate must be higher than the charge for using the capital. Now, if the profit exceeds the charge, the capital charge for using the asset, that means value has been added. But if it hasn't, that means value has been lost. The formula for economic value added is this. Net operating profit after tax. That is the profit that was generated by the what? By the managers or the management. Minus capital charge. That's no whether economic value has been added. Capital charge is work. as the cost of debt plus cost of equity. Times the capital that was employed. Weighted average cost of capital. Work can be can, is known as the expected returns from the shareholders times the capital employed. I will share that we brought one one million hundred million. We are expecting ten percent on this hundred million. So that's the that's the charge. That's what they are charging the managers for using their their capital. Adjustments. There are several because of the fact that we are using um accounting profits. Right, we need to adjust. Um, we need to make some. Um, we need to make reasonable um ad adjustments in order for it to be for, for for us to arrive at the new part. Now, what this means is this: for capital employed adjustment, expenditure on intangible assets should be capitalized, not expensed. 
That means if it has been expended before, it should be what? Added back to what? Capital employed. And amortization should be what? Deducted. Provision, allowance, and default tax reserve should be added back to capital employed. That means provision has been deducted, allowance has been deducted. These are not cash items. These are just estimates. Because the fact that they are estimates, and we're looking for economic value added, they are meant to what? Add them back because they have been deducted already from the profit or loss. Leases should be capitalized, should not be capitalized, sorry, but the actual lease rental should be deducted from capital employed. Leases should what? Should not be capitalized. You know that capital, um, um, finance lease and operating lease, finance lease is always capitalized because it is assumed that the owner, the, um, the leasee is basically the owner, right? No, that's why it's being capitalized because it's a long-term lease and the leasee takes responsibility for all the weeks involved in leasing the assets. But the true fact is that the, um, the, 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 lease, the lease should be what? Should not be capitalized and should be added back to what? Capital employed. It's only the lease rental that was paid for leasing the asset should be what? Should be deducted from capital employed. For no part adjustments, expenditure on research and development should be added back to no part. Expenditure on research and development have been what? Deducted. What are you going to do? You're meant to do what? You're meant to add it back. Depreciation and fee charges on leased assets because if the lease was capitalized before, that means depreciation has been removed from it and also fees charges. So you need to what? Add them back to no parts. Any addition or reduction from deferred tax reserve should be added or subtracted from no parts. Provision and allowances should be what? Added back because they, what? they have been subtracted. The next thing is market value added. Market value added can be calculated as the difference between the company's market value, that's both equity and debt, and the amount of capital invested in the business. The formula is market value of debt plus market value of equity minus book value of equity. Now, looking at market value added, sorry, market value added, what is the value, the market value that has been added to the company? This, how can we get this? Is the market value of debt plus market value of equity. Market value of debt and market value of equity is the total market value of the company. And what the company is worth minus the book value of equity. That is the balance sheet value. If the market value is positive, that means value has been added. If negative, that means value has been lost. Now, the valuation, of, the valuation method of market value added is this. Market value added can be estimated by can be calculated by estimating the expected economic value added for a company or division and discounting it to a present value using a suitable cost of capital in order to obtain a valuation for any value. So now we have basically we have the economic the current economic value of the assets. This is the, this is what the asset is being worth today. This is the current economic value. Then the estimated market value added we give us the word valuation of the company let's have let's take an example abc a public limited company is considering a takeover bid for xyz a private company the takeover will be friendly but abc needs to decide a price that is prepared to offer for the acquisition of the shares in xyz the account of xyz for the past few years has been analyzed an adjustment has been made to obtain an estimated economic book value of the asset of XYZ, which is worth 50 million. It has also been estimated that for each of the past five years, XYZ has made economic value added of 4 million. ABC is prepared to pay for this economic value of XYZ plus a premium paid. On MVA. It proposes it proposes to calculate MVA as the present value of expected annual EVA for the next 10 years. 
it's estimated that the EVA will be 4.5 million per year in the future. A stable cost of equity, cost of capital to apply to the valuation is 9%. Now, getting this now, what do I have to do? The price that ABC will offer is there for what? The, I said the economic, the current economic value of the asset. What is the current economic value of the asset? It's 50 million. Now, the current economic value of the asset today is 50 million. Now, it, has, the, it proposes to calculate the MV as the present value. Present value of the estimated annual EVA for the next 10 years. It's estimated that the EVA will be what? The, it's estimated that the EVA will be what? 4.5 million per year in the future. So, we are going to discount this 4.5 million today. What is the, if you have to receive 4.5 million every year for the next 10 years, what is the value today? So, with this, we'll do the DCF. The DCF is 6.4. The DCF is 6.418. As I said, DCF is 1, min, 1 minus 1 plus R raised power minus N divided by R. You get the 1, 1, 1 minus 1 plus R. R now is 9%. Raised to the power minus, minus N. N is 10. Divided by R. R is 0 0.09. Which will give us 6.418. 6.418 times 4.5. Gross in 8.9 million. So the end number nine million is the estimated MVA. How do you get estimated MVA? Estimated MVA is the present value of the expected annual EVA. The expected future annual EVA. And I will get it in. So if the current economic value of the asset is 50 and the market value to add to the company in the next 10 years is 8.9, that means the value of the company is. I mean, the value of the company is 